Hello, welcome to IDG Talks. My name is Anastasia Lavrina, and today we have a very special guest joining me now from Geneva, Switzerland, David Cikvaidze, Vice President of the Swiss Forum on International Affairs, Associate Fellow of the Geneva Center for Security Policy and former Chief of the Cabinet of the Director General of the United Nations Office at Geneva. Warm welcome to IDG Talks. Thank you very much for having me, Anastasia. It's always a pleasure to uh, speak to you in whichever language. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining our discussion. And today with you, we would like to talk about the upcoming event, COP29, to be held in Azerbaijan in November 2024. Uh, you have a great experience of work for the United Nations office, and it will be an honor to know your opinion. Uh, for the beginning, can you provide an overview of the significance of the Baku hosting the United Nations Climate Change Conference this year? Well, uh, I'd say that the selection of Baku as the host for an event of such planetary significance is probably the utmost level of international recognition for Azerbaijan. Let's not forget that Azerbaijan has... Uh, uh, since its independence, has been going through these various stages of, uh, of uh, let's say, this uh, uh, recognition, quote unquote. Um, suffice it to uh, say that it was the first of the former Soviet republics to be elected to the UN Security Council as a non-voting um, uh, member. That was in uh, for the two year uh, in 2012, 2013. Um, and the only other one after Azerbaijan was Kazakhstan. Uh, of course, we're not counting Ukraine and Belarus that are founding members of the organization. Another major uh, element is um, that Azerbaijan chaired the NAM for an unprecedented number of terms, and this is at the request of the membership of the NAM. So, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, absolutely uh, logical um, uh, that uh, Azerbaijan uh, rise through uh, these uh, levels uh, and it's commensurate with its standing in the world. And uh, speaking of which, uh, in this uh, resounding recognition, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a recognition of and the testament to the role, standing, and uh, convening power of Azerbaijan and of the respect that uh, President Aliyev commands among his peers. Now, there's another factor that um, the fact that COP29 um, is uh, being held in what is uh, loosely referred to uh, as a petrostate is also very significant because Azerbaijan is in the forefront of efforts to engage in the green transition. And, you know, I, um, I'd like to quote uh, President Aliyev, who put it so well recently, don't judge us by what we have, judge us by what we do. So in short, I think that Baku uh, will be the capital of the world in November 2024. Talking about this event, we should also mention the other countries in the region of the South Caucasus. Um, in what ways you think uh, Baku's hosting this conference, COP29, reflect regional perspectives and contributions to global climate initiatives? Well, um, look, uh, Baku is a leader in the South Caucasus, Central Asia wider region in many respects, including in efforts aimed at the green transition. And this despite the fact that uh, according to OPEC figures together, oil and gas make up to 60% of the energy pie and will demand uh, uh, much more um, uh, investment uh, in the years up to 2045. However, fully cognizant of this, Azerbaijan nevertheless works hard towards a green transition. And let me just give you one example, the most vivid example. Azerbaijan is the central point in the cooperation of this wider region in the uh, generation and exporting of green electricity uh, from Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan uh, through the underwater an underwater cable in the Caspian Sea and then through Azerbaijan and, uh, uh, and, and Georgia through a, an underwater Black Sea cable to Southern Europe. I mean, this is a major, major uh, project and a major undertaking. 
um, and it will uh, put a huge dent in in uh, in uh, the uh, uh, current situation with uh, with um, uh, energy uh, the energy picture. And this and uh, many other uh, examples bespeak of Azerbaijan's key role in this green transition. Right. Um, one of the key targets of this conference is to bring together the countries and make them to work closer on the most sensitive issues. Therefore, what opportunities this conference present for advancing international cooperation on climate issue? Thank you. I'm glad you uh, circled back to the opportunities. Uh, I didn't want to start with challenges, although we will get to that, I, I, I think. But uh, look, uh, it's clear that uh, you know there are a number of deliverables that need to be delivered by COP29. The uh, primary, the primary among them is is climate financing, and uh, it is expected by all that uh, governments should establish a new. Uh, climate finance uh, goal and reflecting actually the the scale and urgency of the climate challenge and you know uh, we all regard this as a uh, as an ongoing process cop 28 uh, um, uh, fed into cop 29 and cop 29 is going to feed into cop 30 in brazil and member states uh, government should come prepared with new nationally determined contributions that are economy wide and that cover all greenhouse gases and are fully aligned with the 1.5 uh, centigrade temperature limit. That would be the main deliverable. Now, for for the global uh, stock take outcome, um, uh, many have uh, emphasized the new um, uh, nationally determined contributions. This is a uh, a term that's becoming more and more household, and its acronym NDCs. Uh, should be more ambitious, uh, bring more ambitious mitigation projects uh, on targets, um, and uh, they need to uh, reduce the emissions as uh, as uh, rapidly as, as possible. But they should be uh, that should be the aim. But they should be submitted as early as possible, uh, well ahead of uh, COP30. So uh, we are hoping that they will be at least pledged by the time of COP29, and that will be a major deliverable. Now, there's uh, the issue of Article 6, uh, which has two sub-articles. It's a technical issue, and it's um, it probably will be, or could be a possible deliverable, but um, it's uh, it, it's not as, as um, high up as, uh, as the, uh, the others. Well, but it uh, does seem realistic to achieve the climate finance target now how do you see this process? Is it the right time to work on that? The country is ready? Uh, I think there is no right time and there is no wrong time. It's uh, the time has come and we need to work on this. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, as I said, the climate finance uh, target would be uh, the most important outcome of COP29. I think. Uh, the way to achieve this is to expand the list of countries who are obliged to provide funding. And, and I'm not talking just about the North, you know, uh, the affluent North, US, uh, Western Europe, etc. You also need to uh, include here the emerging economies of Brazil and the Gulf countries and so on. And, you know, in, in this uh, effort, I think the enlightened self-interest of these countries um, uh, should be a, a major factor. Um, there are different approaches to this. You could also uh, try to find new ways of mobilizing funds. Uh, for example, uh, levies on high emitting sectors. Um, in, in, in all of these, um, you know, the leadership and negotiating authority of Azerbaijan as the chair, as the host and of President Aliyev will be a deciding, decided, a deciding factor. Uh, but uh, you know, Azerbaijan should not be the uh, the sole uh, sort of uh, carrier of, of this burden. Um, all countries need to chip in. You know, uh, the bottom line is that at COP28, uh, petro states of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates broke the mold 
by agreeing to uh, uh, transition away from fossil fuels, a lofty goal. Um, and but it was uh, it was a very very um, uh, resonant um, goal that was presented as a as a major outcome. I think we need uh, at COP 29 something equally dramatic in Baku, and the most obvious issue is climate financing. But it's best done in collaboration with key players and the group of key players. There's actually such a group, so that will be the most important deliverable. And I think it can and should be delivered. Well, and we cannot avoid the political issue here. Therefore, what are the policy challenges at COP29 you can mention and how might they influence concrete climate action? Yeah, <laughs> I, I figured that we would get to the challenges, obviously. Uh, look, um, there are many challenges and there are many risks and uh, they uh, range from technical and management issues like uh, a smooth adoption of the uh, agenda, uh, which didn't happen uh, actually initially at uh, COP28, to managing civil society. You may remember that in Egypt and in uh, the Emirates, uh, uh, civil society was seen to be very restricted. And I must say that uh, Azerbaijan is already being a kind of second guess that it will be restricted. But uh, this needs to be preempted by foreseeing civil society places of access and courteous treatment and, um, and uh, basically um, co-opting them into, into the work of COP29. Um, very important uh, risk, but challenge, uh, probably a challenge, would be working with the watchdog groups. They're traditionally critical of government efforts, particularly uh, active since COP28 was held in a petrol state. So um, they could be expected to sharpen their gaze in the run up to COP29. Um, and among them, uh, there are such organizations as Carbon Brief and Global Witness and others. So that is a, a, is, is a challenge uh, which is, uh, is there, but it can be worked with and through. A very important uh, challenge is, uh, is youth as, a, as an element. And, uh, you know, I've heard um, personal uh, kind of uh, rumblings from some youth representatives um, who were at COP28, uh, despite having a pavilion, meeting with government officials, being quote unquote consulted, many youth representatives complained of a complete lack of meaningful inclusion and engagement of youth in actual policy making. So that needs to be taken into account and we need to preempt such criticism by engaging closely with youth representatives and setting up uh, consultative mechanisms so that they don't only have access somewhere, uh, but they also uh, feel that they are a part of the process of consultation. And from such issues, to major political uh, international issues, uh, you know, the anti-Azerbaijan lobbying impact on selected governments is a major uh, challenge and risk. And the uh, you know, hostile positions of various uh, uh, levels, um, there are many out there, in short, who would like to give a quote unquote black eye to Baku in the context of COP29 and that needs to be factored in in the run up and uh, various advocacy efforts need to be uh, efforts and events and uh, outreach uh, needs to be um, um, factored in. And finally, of course, of course, everything is political in this world, especially something like uh, a COP meeting, the abysmal relationships among the three major powers and the particularly toxic international context um, obviously could be major risks to the work of COP. So here again, um, you know, the leadership and uh, authority of, of President Aliyev uh, and of the Azeri uh, officials who are going to be presiding uh, will be uh, Im an important factor in, in the diplomatic um, smoothing of possible uh, factors such as these. So, you know, there are many others that um, we know are there, but uh, we don't need to go into. One more question I have. 
almost on a weekly base, we can see how the representatives of different United Nations agencies are coming to Azerbaijan, participating at the highest level meetings and talking about the preparatory work Azerbaijan is doing for COP29. Um, how do you think the holding of this conference will affect Azerbaijan's cooperation with the United Nations in the future? Well, um, very uh, succinctly put, I think it will further solidify the role and place of Azerbaijan as a solid, dependable, powerful regional player whose political, economic, financial, and multilateral clout extend well beyond the region and who contributes significantly to the peace and security agenda and sustainable development and climate mitigation efforts of the entire international community. Azerbaijan is a major player um, and uh, a major contributor in all these areas. So the holding of, of COP29 can only solidify this role. David, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much, uh, Anastasia. It's always a huge pleasure to work with you. Take care and good luck.